Okay, we are still in lesson 4.9. We're gonna do some examples now. So this is the second video in lesson 4.9. Highly, highly, highly recommend you use graphing paper. If for some reason you don't have graphing paper at home and you're watching this, you know, the night before you're supposed to watch it for class, try to get online, type in graphing paper. You can probably find some somewhere online that you can just print off if you got a printer at home. If you, this isn't the night before, um, try to get some from me at school or whatever, or, um, get some from somewhere and use graphing paper. If you don't have graphing paper and you can't print something off, you're gonna need to be very, very careful in the way you graph things, all right? You need to be very neat. When you're doing your homework, I really want you to use graph paper for this type of lesson. All right, we're gonna do some examples. So the first one we're gonna do is we're gonna translate triangle ABC using the vector negative two, three. And I give you the original points here. So three, one, six, three, and four, five, and I already have that graphed over here. So you pause, get all that copied down right there, get that triangle graphed, and then come back when you're ready. I'm gonna keep moving on the video, so if you don't pause it, you're gonna be way behind. All right, you should have that done by now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move by the vector negative two, three. Remember, x and y, x comes first, y comes second. So this is a left-right movement, and because it's negative, that means we're gonna be moving left. And then that is an up-down movement. Since it's positive, we're gonna be moving up. So we're gonna take this point and we're gonna go left two, and we're gonna go up one, two, three, and we're gonna put a dot right there. And that's my new point. Now, one of the things we're gonna do is we're just gonna call this A prime. Prime just means put a little like single quotation mark there. And then off to the side, we're gonna write its answer. So A prime is located at one, one, two, three, four. Okay, so one, four. All right, let's go back to B. Remember, we're going negative two. So negative two, left two, and then up one, two, three. Okay, so I'm gonna put dot, I'm gonna call that B prime. Okay, that single quotation mark is a prime mark. And then I'm gonna come over here, B prime equals, well, let's see, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. So four, six. All right, now let's do C. So left two, one, two, three. Call that C prime. And that is, let's see, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So two, eight. I'm gonna draw this triangle. I don't have my ruler with me like I did when I drew the original one. So hopefully they still look pretty congruent they might look a little bit off because I don't have my ruler. All right, there we go. Those should look congruent to each other. If they don't, I got a little bit of a curve in that one, sorry, so they don't quite look congruent, but they should. It's one of the reasons you should use a ruler if you have one. Now I want you to look at this. Remember, there was another way to write this, and that was to say x comma y with the arrow x minus 2y plus 3. Now look what happens here. If I take this 3 and I subtract 2, I get 1. And if I take this 1 and I add 3, I get 4. If I take this 6 and subtract 2, I get 4. 3 plus 3 gives me 6. 4 minus 2 gives me 2, and 5 plus 3 gives me 8. So we can take these original points and just subtract 2 from the x's, add 3 of the y's, and it gives me these answers. We did it on a graph by just by saying negative 2, 2 to the left, up 3. That's how you do a translation using a vector or this notation. Okay, next example. We're gonna reflect PQ in the x-axis. So once again, pause the video, copy this down, I'm not going to wait for you um, and just have this dead space in the video. All right, so you should have that copied down now. You got P at 2 comma 3 and Q at negative 2, 1. So 2 comma 3, negative 2 comma 1, the x-axis. Make sure you remember that this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis. I get some kids who do get that backwards all the time, which means you can get things wrong. Now, keep in mind, we already we talked about this. When you do a reflection, you have to move perpendicular to your line of reflection and the same distance. So since the x-axis is horizontal, I need to move vertical. This is one space away, so I'm gonna go one space away here. I'm gonna put a dot, and I'm gonna call that Q prime. 
Here I'm three spaces away. So I'm gonna move three spaces away. Remember we're moving perpendicular to that. So three spaces away moves me right here. P prime. Now I connect. It should look like all we did is take this line segment and flip it down here. These should be congruent to each other. Okay, same remember up here, these were congruent to each other. Okay, so let's write our answers down over here as well. So P prime, let's see, one, two, one, two, three. So two, negative three. And Q prime, negative two, negative one. Now we talked about that back here, first video, when we did a reflection in the x-axis, the x stayed the same and the y changed its sign. So let's look at that. The x stayed the same and the y value, 3, changed its sign, negative 3. The x, negative 2, stayed the same, negative 2, and the y changed its sign. Okay? Next one. Let's reflect A, B, and the Y axis. Okay, so once again, copy it down. Pause the video if you need to. Get it copied down real quick, so I'm going to move on pretty quick. Here we go. Negative 1, negative 1. So negative 1, negative 1. 1, 2. Now, this one's a little confusing because it actually crosses the Y axis, but that's okay. All we have to do is think about a, a point at a time. Don't worry about reflecting the whole segment. Just reflect A. So this is, remember, my y-axis is this one. This is my x-axis, all right? So I'm gonna reflect point A across the y-axis. I'm one point away. I go perpendicular until I'm one point away again, and that's A prime. B is also one point away, but it's the other side. So I gotta come this direction one point away, and that's B prime. Now I'm gonna connect a prime with B prime. And these two segments should look congruent to each other, and they do. Okay, let's write down our new answer though. A prime is 1, negative 1. 1, negative 1. And B prime is negative 1, 2. Okay, now we talked about this as well. First lesson. Y axis. X changes its sign. Y doesn't change at all. X changed its sign. The Y didn't change at all. X changed its sign. The Y didn't change at all. All right, got two more examples. This time we're gonna rotate my triangle 90 degrees clockwise around the origin. Now we could go back and look at this, okay? told you, you don't want to memorize this. So I'm going to show you a different way to do a clockwise or a counterclockwise rotation that's really pretty simple. All right? So copy this down, negative 2, 1, negative 1, 4, 2, 4. Get all this copied down on your paper and then pause the video as you do that. Come back and get started and we'll do an example. All right, here we go. So the easiest way to do this is to literally take your paper and rotate it 90 degrees clockwise. Remember, clockwise is the way a clock moves. So we're gonna take our paper, and I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees. I know it's 90 degrees because now this used to be horizontal, and now it's vertical. And all I'm gonna do on my paper is I'm gonna write down where X is right now. So X, it's gonna be prime, remember, because it's new, is at one, two, one, two. And Y, I mean Y prime now, is that one, two, three, four, one. And Z, so Z prime, is going to be at one, two, three, four, negative two. Okay. Now after you've written all that down, just turn your paper back. X prime needs to be at one, two. So one, two. That's X prime. Y prime needs to be at 4, 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. This is, right here. This is X prime. It's Y prime. Z prime. 4, negative 2. And then connect. So again, I'm not using a ruler, so hopefully it still looks like it's congruent. And I draw these straight enough. 
Okay, there we go. Now it should look like we took this and we spun the whole thing this way. So Z ends up way down here, Y ends up here, and X moves there. They all go basically the same distance. Now, remember we talked about this with the uh, picture way back in lesson 4.3. If I connect from here to there, to the origin, remember we're going around the origin, which is the point zero, zero, okay? If I connect from there to there to there, that should form a right angle. Let's look at that. Does that look like it's a right angle, those dotted lines? All right, it sure does. And these distances should be equal, and that happens. Now I could do the same thing. I could go from Y to the origin and out to Y prime, and that should be a right angle. Or Z to the origin to Z prime, that should be a right angle. And once again, the sides of that angle should be the same distance, okay? All right, last one. We're gonna do a composition. So I'm gonna start with MN at negative three, four, and negative five, three. I don't have that graphed yet, but I'll do that here in a second. We're gonna translate by the vector one, negative four, and then we're going to reflect across the line y equals x. The vector's pretty easy. That reflection across the line is gonna be a little bit harder. So pause the video, get this first thing here, and go ahead and attempt to do that vector by yourself. All right, so do all of that, and then come back and watch the video. All right, so you should already have this original MN segment graphed. You should hopefully have the vector part done, just moving right one, down four. If you didn't do right one, down four, pause your video right now, go do it. All right, and then we'll work together on this one because that's a little bit more difficult. All right, so let me get this graph. Negative three, one, two, three, four. That's M. Negative five, one, two, three, four, five, three, one, two, three. Okay, that's N. Okay, nice short little segment here. Okay, now let's translate it by the vector one, negative four. So I'm gonna move one to the right and down one, two, three, four. And we're gonna call that M prime. I'm going to write that down over here, m prime equals, well that's negative 2, 0. Alright, and then we're going to move right 1 and down 1, 2, 3, 4. We're going to call that n prime. To connect that segment, it should look congruent to the original one, it does. I'm going to write down this point, n prime is at negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 1. Remember, this right here means, sorry if you couldn't see all that, I wasn't keeping an eye on the screen while I was videoing, so if you couldn't see all that, get that down real quick. All right, remember this right here? This means the same thing as saying x comma y with the arrow, x plus one, y minus four. Well, what happens if I add one to negative three? I get negative two. What happens if I subtract four from four? I get zero. What happens if I add 1 to negative 5? I get negative 4. What happens if I take 3 and I subtract 4? I get negative 1. So you see how that works? All right, now we need to reflect it across the line y equals x. Well, first off, we got to know where the line y equals x is. Okay, if we think about it this way, it's y equals 1x plus 0. If we put it in mx plus b form. So it goes through the y-axis at the point 0, and it has a slope of 1 up one over one, up one right one, up one right one, up one right one. It's positive, so it's moving up to the right. If I go left one, I gotta go down one, left one, down one, left one, down one, and so on. Okay, that's a slope of one. So let's go ahead and draw that line. Now we're going to reflect in that line. So remember the idea of reflection is you have to travel the same distance and it has to be perpendicular. So since this slope is one, perpendicular means opposite reciprocal. So what's the opposite reciprocal of one? Well, it's negative one. So that means I'm gonna be moving this way. Instead of right one up one, I'm gonna go right one down one. That's a negative one slope. Now I have to think about how far away I am here. So if I go right one down one, I get to the line. So I'm basically one diagonal unit away. So that means that I need to do that again. So right one, down one. So I'm gonna put my point right there. 
Now what do we call that? We already used m prime, so we use m double prime. Just put two of them. Okay, kind of like a quotation mark, a double quotation mark. One unit diagonally away, one unit diagonally away. And if I draw that, it's perpendicular, looking pretty good. This one's a little harder, because if I try counting it, right one, down one, right one, that's kind of weird, because it's already on the line. So, it's a little easier to just count diagonally. There's one diagonal unit and a half. So that's one and a half. So I'm going to go half and a one. Okay, Working this way would be one and a half. So there's my n double prime. Okay, let's connect it. It should look like it's the same length. Now, if I kind of turn it so that this line is more vertical, you see how it looks like we just took this segment right here and we just flipped it over to there? Okay, this is a slide and then that's a flip. Now, is this a glide reflection? Well, my translation vector moves this direction my line of reflection moves that way. Are they parallel? No, obviously not. This is not parallel to this. The movement here would have to be parallel to the line in order for the call, in order to call this a glide reflection. So this is not a glide reflection. All right, let's write our last points down. M double prime, what does it equal? Well, it equals zero movement left and right down two. So zero, negative two. N was negative 1, and then down 1, 2, 3, 4. So negative 1, negative 4. All right, so there's some examples of our um, different transformations we can do. We did a translation twice. We did one just translation. We did this translation as well. We did a reflection in x-axis, a reflection in the y-axis. We did a reflection in the line. Okay, y equals x, we did practice all those. And then we did up here our rotation. Now remember we could rotate 90 degrees the other way. So what do you think we should do if we go 90 the other way? Just turn your paper. Write your points down, turn it back, and graph them. 180, just turn your paper all the way upside down. Write your points down, turn it back, and graph it. So that's the easiest way to do one of those rotations. All right, so that's it for lesson 4.9, and we'll see you guys in class.